Grilling veggies is pretty common, but have you grilled hash browns? Feed your family tonight. Creator and family dinner coach Marie Feebach joins us with her recipe today. Marie, how are you? Oh, Shane, I'm doing so well. <laughs> it's a nice, bright, sunny morning, even though it's not sunny, but it's sure. I'm going to think about grilling, even though I, I've been known to grill in the rain. I don't know about you guys, but we were talking <laughs> about grills off air, and yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the grill. Today we're going to do Boiled potatoes, oftentimes boiled potatoes are sliced, but I find that they're hard to get cooked through when you have the sliced ones. I don't know if you've ever thrown them on the campfire. This is something you do on your grill and I like shredding them. And it just starts with russet potatoes. I'm gonna have Allison grate this on a box grater and you wanna use the large hole on the box grater. But if you want to get them done even faster and you have a food processor with a shredding disc, that is the easiest way to shred the hash browns. And I do both, they go back and forth. I honestly haven't tried the frozen ones, but I bet you could use those for this recipe too. Good, and on this recipe is not a box of Band-Aids, Allison, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotta watch the knuckles when you're doing the box grater. The big thing is after you grate the potato, you want to soak it in some water. And so, yeah, that's I enough. got a little baby bit. You're totally fine. When you put them in the water, it's going to release some of the starch from the potatoes. Oftentimes, hash brown potatoes can get a little bit gummy, and that's because there's too much residual starch. These russet potatoes that we're using are a high starch potato, and they get really crispy, but you've got to rinse off the starch. My favorite tool is my salad spinner to do that. So I have some that I put in my salad spinner, and I've spun after they've gotten in the water, and then the water just drips to the bottom. Huh. But you want to take it even one step further and put it into a dish towel and then gather up the dish towel around it and then you are going to squeeze out even more water and you will be surprised how much water you can actually squeeze out of these potatoes even after they've been spun. I, I'm getting some drips there, yeah. you see that? You want to squeeze out as much water as possible because Water is your enemy. It's going to be the enemy of crispness, and we want crisp potatoes, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay, so I've squeezed out as much water as I can on these. Then we're going to take a piece of foil, and this is about 18 inches, and I just use cooking spray. I find that they don't get as greasy, and they still get brown and crispy. There's a little less calories there when you're using the cooking spray, and you want to put about two potatoes worth on each pack it, then I just spray a little bit more cooking spray over the top and sprinkle it with a little bit of that coarse sea salt. Mm. Put about a half a teaspoon of coarse sea salt and then I fold in the sides and I fold the top over and the other one over and I put it on the grill. Now, you see how this layer has more foil than this side because sure. you've got all the folds? I put that side down first. I start my grill hot and I turn it to low, but this is going to get those potatoes cooking and then after about seven minutes, you'll flip it on the grill and they'll start browning on the opposite side. And when they're done, after about 14, 15 minutes, you open them up and you have these brown potatoes and they can get crispy on the bottom. If they're not quite brown enough, put them back on for a couple more minutes. Yeah. But it's super simple and you can cook it right alongside your chicken or your steak or anything and they get a little bit of that smoky flavor they're super easy and i just think it's a really fun side dish without having to turn your oven on oh yeah sure I and versatile that. too you got breakfast the next morning well breakfast the <laughs> next morning you could sprinkle in some herbs you could sprinkle in some onions if you like onions you could even add other veggies add in some shredded carrots for some color if you wanted but it's super fun and versatile easy recipe Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, lately it's just been getting in a rut with just vegetables yes. with whatever we're grilling. So this is nice. So the key is crispness and avoiding that water. So that's what you did. You guys all set up. Yep. That's perfect. Good Man. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And again, Got squeeze that, that water out because water is your enemy. And that's, but you do want to soak them in water first to get that starch off. So it's kind of a three step process, but super easy. Good deal. Well, where can we find this recipe? and others if we're kind of in a rut right now. Absolutely, you know it's so easy to get into a rut. Visit FeedYourFamilyTonight.com. I have all of my recipes posted there. There's over three years of recipes from cake, so there's lots of fun stuff in the archives. I've got some stuff for the 4th of July, watermelon salads and those types of things if you want to get ready for your feast on the 4th. Sounds good. You can find Marie there. You can find her all over social media, too. I'm sure there's a lot of questions right now about July 4th in your Facebook group. Yes, well. jo join me in the Facebook group. I'm happy to meet you there. All right. Thank you very much, Marie. And Allison, you did a great job. <laughs>
<laughs> Glad you're back, Shane. <laughs> All right, we are going to take a short break. We will have more Good Morning Kickland coming up right after this.